Matthew chapter number 11, and I want you to look with me in verse number 28. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Brother Jordan, will you pray for us tonight before we preach? Oh my. Oh my, would you help us? Amen. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated tonight. I appreciate you standing as we read the Word of God together tonight. Joseph Crater was a 45-year-old New York Supreme Court judge in 1930. And one night he had dinner with his friends. He waved goodbye to his friends. He hailed a taxi cab. And he rode off never to be seen or heard from again. It's one of the greatest mysteries still a mystery they ultimately decided that he was no longer alive and declared him dead but a search of his apartment produced a note attached to a check with a very sizable amount and the note simply read this from Joseph Crater I am very weary. Weariness, I believe, tonight plagues both those that are within the church and those that are without the church. The last three verses of chapter number 11 provides an offer to us by the Lord and an invitation to accept it. The description of the person invited is very full. The active person is invited and also the passive person is invited. What I mean by that is those who labor after salvation and those who are laden before salvation. We are invited tonight to accept Christ and to come to Christ as our priest. That is, come to Christ to be saved. Amen. I'm glad for that night that I responded to that invitation and I came to Christ. And He became my Savior. Amen. And so we are invited to Christ as our priest to be saved. We are also invited to Christ as our prince that is to be ruled by. Yes, yes. Amen. I didn't make him Lord. He was already Lord. Yes. And I'm glad, thank God tonight, that he is Lord of my life. And I am submitting myself unto his lordship and his divine direction and sovereign workings in my life. Yes. We're invited to Christ as our priest and as our prince but also in these verses of Scripture, you'll find that we are invited to Christ as our prophet. In other words, to be taught by Him, to be learned of Him, if you'll have that tonight. The voice of pleading mercy invites all to come to Christ. Commit and submit unto Him tonight. It presents one who is accessible. Aren't you glad tonight that we have a Lord that is accessible unto all? 
Amen. You say, preacher, what does that mean? That means that he is easy to reach tonight. I'm glad that we have a Lord that is easy to reach. He's very accessible. You say, preacher, how accessible is he? Well, he's just a word away. He's just a prayer away. I'm glad, thank God, I can get on my knees here and access him in the third heaven out yonder. We can access him. He is one that is accessible tonight. I'd say tonight that he is not only one that is accessible, but we see that he is one that is also very available tonight. He is available. You can come come to him tonight. He's available. He is not tied up. He is not busy. He is not uh, confused. He is not uh, labored with other things whereby you cannot uh, come unto him. But I'm glad he is available unto all tonight. I want to stress that unto all tonight that will come. It presents one who is accessible easy to reach. He can be reached. It presents one that is available. He is present at hand. Amen. I'm glad, thank God, that I had a grandmother that was able to make her way or come to the Lord. And then I had parents that were able to come to the Lord because of his availability. And thank God I'm glad for the day that I was able to come to the Lord. And and my children and your children and grandchildren can come unto the available Lord. He's present at hand. And then I'd say it presents one that is approachable tonight. He is uh, uh, welcoming. He is open. Uh, uh, there are many tonight that are unapproachable, uh, uh, but I'm telling you about one, the Lord Jesus tonight, uh, that is open arm welcoming and very cordial uh, unto you tonight. Come unto me all ye uh, uh, that labor and are heavy laden, uh, and I will give you rest. I'd say tonight that many are acquainted with the sound uh, of these verses but brother Foster few are acquainted with the sense uh, of these verses Uh, uh, they are not to be complicating uh, uh, but they are to be complimenting of Christ uh, our Savior Uh, uh, this is for all laborers tonight Uh, uh, this is for those that are laden uh, uh, ones without exception uh, of high or low degree Uh, uh, you can come unto the Lord Uh, uh, rich or poor uh, uh, you can come to the Lord tonight Uh, uh, whether you're old or young uh, uh, you can come unto the Lord Uh, uh, whether you're moral or depraved uh, uh, you can come to the Lord Uh, uh, whether you're learned or illiterate uh, uh, you can come to the Lord Uh, uh, whether you're male or female uh, I'm glad you can come uh, unto to the Lord tonight there's no bar upon these verses there's no bolt upon these verses we must come to Christ as our rest and repose in him I'm thankful to remind us all tonight uh, uh, there is a place uh, of safety in the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, There is a place of shelter uh, in the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, And there is a place of security uh, in the Lord Jesus Christ uh, as there was refuge uh, uh, for that weary dove uh, uh, that was uh, uh, Noah's dove in Genesis 8 uh, uh, where he sent forth a dove uh, uh, to see if the waters were debated uh, or abated from off the face of the ground uh, uh, but the dove found no rest uh, uh, for the sole of her feet uh, and she returned unto him uh, into the ark uh, aren't you glad tonight uh, uh, that you can come to Christ uh, as our refuge tonight uh, and you and I I can find rest in the Lord Jesus Christ. The situations in life, they weather us. Without a doubt, you come into those doors tonight into the house of God 
and you have situations that you have been uh, dealing with for years and and uh, and for years and and that situation or those situations uh, in life have a tendency uh, uh, to weather us or to uh, wear away at us. Uh, I'm not going to ask you tonight because I already know the answer. Uh, uh, but you have things going on in your life uh, uh, that is weathering you. Uh, I mean, it's eroding away at you. Uh, is anybody hearing me tonight? Uh, I'm telling you, they are just uh, uh, constantly pounding uh, against your life. Uh, and so those situations, uh, uh, they weather us. There's sicknesses in life and they weaken us. Brother Goodson was just telling me about the battle that he has in his health. And, and I haven't seen Brother Goodson for many, many uh, years, but I'm thankful uh, uh, that our paths crossed long time ago, and and I'm glad that he's here in the house of God tonight. Uh, uh, but there's sicknesses in life uh, uh, that weakens us. Uh, uh, but may I say tonight, sin in life uh, uh, will weary us. Uh, it tires us. Uh, it taxes us, uh, uh, and it takes from our lives. Uh, uh, oh, may I say tonight, uh, uh, well. Whether you have a situation, uh, uh, come unto the Lord. Uh, uh, whether you're sick tonight, uh, uh, come unto the Lord. Uh, and whether you're in sin tonight, uh, I'm glad you can come uh, unto the Lord tonight uh, and find rest. The righteous burdened by labor can come to the Lord. The religious bearing the law can come to the Lord. The rebellious that is broken and lost can come unto the Lord. May I present it like this? The righteous are invited. The religious are invited. And the rebellious, you can come unto the Lord tonight. I might just give you this one thought tonight and step out of the way out of these verses of Scripture, but I want to present tonight this thought that God has been rolling around in my heart for the service tonight. I want you to notice, first of all, uh, uh, there is the beckoning uh, uh, that is present in these verses. Uh, you say, preacher, what do you mean by that? Uh, uh, well, that invitation, that call uh, uh, to come, it is in the very present tense uh, in these verses of Scripture. Uh, uh, the word come uh, is put in the present tense. Uh, and in the Greek, it is intensely present. Uh, uh, you say, preacher, what does that mean? Uh, that means to come, amen. Uh, uh, that means to come now. Uh, uh, that means to come uh, and do not delay. Uh, that means come today. Uh, uh, don't wait till tomorrow. Uh, that means to come uh, in this moment. Uh, would you come uh, unto the Lord tonight? The beckoning that is present, come today. Don't delay, don't debate it. Uh, don't uh, depart from it tonight, uh, uh, but would you come? Uh, I looked up that word come, uh, and you know that it means uh, uh, to uh, approach one, uh, but it also means uh, if we are coming to, uh, uh, then we are leaving something. Uh, uh, we are advancing to something. Uh, uh, we are leaving one thing. Uh, and you're advancing to uh, another thing. Uh, and when you come to the Lord, uh, I'm telling you it's not only an advance, uh, uh, but it is a great upgrade. Amen. Uh, uh, you'll never come to nothing no better uh, uh, than to come uh, uh, to the Lord tonight. Amen. Come. You say, preacher, how uh, should I come tonight? Well, I'd say tonight quickly, uh, I, I believe that you and I can come uh, uh, filthy. Yeah. Amen. Just come filthy. 
You say, preacher, give me a little while and I'll get my life cleaned up. I'll stop this or I'll stop that or I'll start that. But no, that is not what you and I need to do. I remember that night when I was lost and on my way to hell, I came filthy in my sin. I came dirty. I came just as I was. But I didn't leave like I came hallelujah I came dirty but I left clean I came lost but I left saved I'm glad I came filthy unto the Lord Oh, you don't have to wait to be cleaned up. He'll do the cleaning in your life you just come filthy just like you are I remember uh, Brother Goodson will remember he preached at my dad's church on multiple occasions. Dad pastored uh, uh, right there on Gear Highway, right there in Marietta, South Carolina. And it was just a storefront building. Dad is not there no more. They've moved from it. But we'd often have to do upgrades and, and we'd often have to paint that building. And one day... Uh, we was out there painting Brother Doug and we were working on that building. I remember I was just a little boy. I probably wasn't doing much help, probably just uh, more in the way than anything else. Uh, but I'll never forget, Brother Goodson, there was a town drunk by the name of Bobby. Uh, and it got to be that Bobby began to walk by uh, that church right there on the, on the highway, right there on the road. Uh, and Bobby would walk by and begin to say, uh, uh, what are y'all doing? What's going on? Uh, and Daddy said, well, we're painting this building. Uh, and he said, well, I used to be a painter. Uh, and he said, you need some help. Uh, and Daddy said, I, I, well, we ain't going to pay nobody. He said, we might take you and get you something to eat. Uh, and uh, he began to work. He began to come. Uh, and uh, and uh, we began to show him some kindness uh, and the love of Christ. Uh, and uh, we invited him to church. Uh, he told us on many different occasions he said I'm nothing but a drunk I'm a good for nothing drunk I'm the, I'm the town drunk and uh, daddy said it don't matter you just come on I remember one Wednesday night I was having church and the back doors opened up and here come that town drunk coming through the aisle coming through the door and daddy finished up preaching and he gave the order a call and out stepped old Bobby he wasn't in a good shape Bobby had been all drinking that day I seen this with my own eyes I seen him stumble down the aisle in a drunken stupor and get on that altar and he asked the Lord to come into his heart and do you know that he come drunk but he left sober amen you say preacher I don't believe that then you're beyond being blessed because I know God can. He can take the sinner and clean them up and make them a saint of God if they'll come unto the Lord. Come filthy. Oh, you say, preacher, what does that mean? That means to come sold. Oh, I was nasty, Brother Jordan. I was dirty in my sin. I was filthy and rotten. The Lord's are dealing with somebody tonight, I believe, with all my heart. I don't know who you are, but I'm trying to tell you how you don't have to wait tonight. You ought to come to the Lord. You say, preacher, I'm dirty. Come on tonight and let the Lord do a work in your life. Come sold, come stained. Oh, the word has the idea to be squalid. I'm talking about rotten and filthy. That's the way you come. You come filthy tonight. And then may I say this, I not only come filthy, but come fully tonight. Amen. That beckoning uh, that is present uh, is, a, is a beckoning to come uh, and to come fully uh, not holding nothing back uh, 
Woo! Amen. How do you remember when you stepped out of that aisle? I'm telling you, I stepped out. I sink or swim. Hallelujah. I didn't hold nothing back. They couldn't have tied me down. I thank God I was going to the Lord to get the help for my life. Come fully tonight without no reservations. He'll never hurt you. Oh, my Lord is in the helping business tonight. Oh, Brother Doug said this is a hospital. Are you hurting tonight by sin? Then come unto the Lord and find rest. The saying is come or to do something lock, stock, and barrel entirely. Those three elements that makes up a firearm. You got the locking mechanism, you got the stock, and you got the barrel. In other words, you got the entirety of it. You can't come to the Lord and say, I'll give you this part of my life, but I want to keep that part of my life. Oh no, that ain't the word. You ought to come fully, entirely, and wholly tonight unto the Lord. And I would say, not only come filthy and come fully, come fastly. How many of you believe tonight we're running out of time? Uh, we're running out of time. Come fastly. Come with urgency. Oh, I like it when it gets so real sometimes. They don't even wait to about five songs during the invitation. But it's a stirring in their hearts so much. They got to come. They got to come in an urgent way. You don't have to wait till I get done preaching tonight. If the Holy Ghost is a dealing with your heart, sinner or saint tonight, you ought to come as fast as you can. We're not promised tomorrow. We're not promised our next breath. So while there's time, while there's opportunity, I'd come unto the Lord tonight. There is the benefit that is promised. The benefit that is promised is this. Verse number 28, Come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. What a benefit. Amen. I, I like benefits. Amen. I, I want to know what kind of benefit do you got? I, I like benefit. I don't like. I don't like bl- blisterings. I like benefits. Well, one of the benefits here. The ultimate benefit is rest. Oh, there's rest in the Lord Jesus tonight if you'll come unto the Lord. The benefit that's promised, rest. He gives internal rest here and then uh, by grace he gives eternal rest there. There's the benefit that is promised. Rest, the Bible says, the old writer Baxter said, the last jewel in our crown and blessed attribute of heavenly, of, of attribute of heavenly rest is that it is eternal. Amen. And eternal rest. You say, preacher, what are you trying to say? Thank God for the rest we have here internally. But I wish you'd go with me tonight and thank God that there's going to be an eternal rest one day. Hallelujah. I'm talking about where there is no more a chaos or storm or disappointment appointments or hardships or trouble in our life. Amen. Brother Doug, would it be alright if somebody come and got on the piano and just play something softly for me? The word rest means to end an argument. Let it rest. The word rest means to lay down a burden. The word rest means to let a field grow fallow. The word rest is to order a military group to stop to rest. Rest that is first. That's what we need. 
Rest that is fine, you'll not find no better rest. Rest that is fixed, if he gives rest, whoo, Lord of mercy, I'm telling you, if he gives rest, you won't have to worry about turmoil no more. You won't have to worry about that uh, have anxiousness and that anxiety no more. If he gives rest, it's fixed. There's the bearing that is practical tonight. The bearing that is practical. The Bible says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek. I thank God that he is meek and lowly and hard, and you shall find rest unto your souls. I believe that there's two ways to live in this life. You can live restless or you can live resting. Rockefeller Center in New York City. There is a statue of Atlas. I've never seen it. I've only read about it. Who in the Greek mythology is condemned to hold the earth and heavens for eternity. And there in Rockefeller Center, New York City, there's a statue of Atlas and he's straining, Brother Goodson, up under the weight of the earth and the heavens. A man of physique, a man that is the picture-perfect man, strong is under the weight of the world and, uh, and of the heavens and he's straining and a lot of people are living their lives like that statue. I'm not saying this is right. I'm just saying this is so. But if you cross the street in a Roman cathedral, I'm just giving you an example. I'm not condoning anything. Cross the street. Go into that cathedral. And there is a statue of the boy Jesus. And the contrast is often seen. Do you want to live life like Atlas? Straining under the load, trying to carry the burdens which you cannot carry? Or do you want to live like what is portrayed by that statue of boy Jesus standing and holding the whole world in his hand? You can either try to carry the world or allow the Lord to carry the world in your life and you in the world and, and, and know that you're in his hands tonight. And, and it ain't about you carrying the weight. It ain't about you doing anything. Uh, it's about finding rest tonight. Uh, well, that's what's plaguing our country tonight. Uh, they're running to and fro, uh, drinking and drugging themselves, uh, uh, trying to find rest. Uh, but I'm trying to tell you tonight, uh, there's only rest uh, in the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and it's available, uh, accessible, tonight would you come unto the Lord and find rest for your souls let's stand every head bowed every eye closed the preacher's coming that's my heart that's my message tonight if you enjoyed today's message head on over to ibcforums.com and click on sermons and don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast as always thanks for listening